it adds up. And I'll listen. Welcome back to Lumifa Classic. We're back here with the 1974 XJ12. It's an earlier car on carbs. This is the second episode. In the previous episode on this car, we did a lot of things to the ignition system, realized it had the wrong plugs in it, replaced those, new cap and rotor, fixed the distributor because all the advanced and everything was stuck. So now all that works and it fired up and ran on 12. It was really late. We didn't have time to continue with anything else. But now it's a new day. Let's have a look at it. I just put a timing light on it and it's way off. It needs to, we need to advance the timing a lot. It's really, really far back. It's about four or six degrees after top dead center. And we're looking for 10 degrees before top dead center. And the problem is I can't turn the distributor anymore. The little um, screw that you change it with only sets a tiny parameter. You need to do a rough setting and I disturbed that one, took everything apart also that I changed that little rod, which I think now is in a better position than it was before and that really did alter the timing quite a bit. So I need to remove the distributor cap, get into those Allen bolts there. And if you want to advance a distributor, you need to go opposite direction that it turns. So this thing turns counterclockwise. So we need to turn the distributor clockwise a bit. So I'm going to take all that apart, turn it clockwise, We'll fire it up again and let's see if we can get a light on there and actually get the correct timing. So this is not the easiest thing to do on a V12 because you can't easily get the cap and to the side. So you got to make a choice. Either you remove the spark plugs from there or from here. I'm going to remove them from the cap. Just the ones on the rear cylinders. And now we're going to have to do firing order again but it's not too big of a deal and if you don't know I um, mentioned this in previous video but if you haven't seen it I have a shirt that I made on my website with the B12 firing order on it so if you're a fan of the Jag V12 you can check those out and uh, help support the channel any profits from the sale just go back into the channel you know camera equipment memory cards just everything to try and make this channel as good as possible. So this is the main adjuster. So you see it is as far as it wants to go clockwise because when we did that we got it to to sort of run. Um, so that is pointing about that way. So let's see if we turn it. Back a bit. So we have. Alright, so that's maximum the other way. Now I'm going to want to turn it about as much. But to do that, well, it is a little bit involved. So rotor needs to come off. Uh, if you have the original ignition system, it's not as complicated as this because there are holes in the slots to get to these down there, but there's one of them I cannot get to. So I remove the vacuum part, then I can move that whichever way I want. This snap ring is not really doing much, but we can take that off easily. And there we go. I checked this ignition system is still for sale a couple places. And um, it does seem a pretty cost efficient alternative. SNG Barrett make a system where you use the later uh, style ignition system, but it's housed in the original Opus, so it looks, you know, stock. And uh, but this thing is. Uh, about half of that price, I think, the system. So uh, if it works, that's really good. So do we need to remove it? No, we can just move it to the side there and we can get to those Allens. Okay, there we go. 
they're all loose now. And we're going clockwise. So we'll turn it so it's facing a bit like it was before, like that. And hopefully with the adjustment that I can make there, we'll have enough to get this in the right spot. But I am not gonna tighten these up too much. Just a little bit, and then we can take this apart once everything is set correctly and tighten them a little bit more. Well, tighten that one, it's easy to get to. Alright, let's... I'll just put all this back together. We'll fire it up, go down there and have a look and see if we get the correct timing now. All right, it's running at pretty much the same as before. Let me just advance it a bit. All right, now we're going to where we can go. but I can only get it to five degrees now with it advanced as much as that will go. So, same thing again. Take it off and move it just a little bit more, but it's a lot, lot happier now. But we need about five more degrees. Timing is set now at 10 degrees. Idle's a bit too low, but the next thing we're gonna do is tackle the carbs. But everyone's a lot better than it has the whole time. Let's just fire it up. See, it's, it's just instantaneous. Really good for all the response. And it's not really even warmed up yet. I've turned the choke off just to have it down at idle. But, see, give it a little bit of choke. See, or it's idle. It does a really, really happy camper. Let me see if I can actually show you guys underneath with the timing light. I mean, I have a detailed video on doing this, but let me see if I can show you guys. It is quite tight down here. And I went through and I marked everything with silver paint so you can see it. Let me see. There is a line on the damper that lines up with zero over there. And that is because I have this thing set to 10. So, really, really happy with that. And the dog's sleeping, or I think I woke the dog up now. But I am gonna shut it off. We are gonna let the whole thing cool down a little bit. Then we're gonna have a look at the carbs. Take them, just the tops off. Make sure that the diaphragms aren't you know completely ruined make sure not too dirty inside i do have a couple spare diaphragms i don't have four but i had three so while i waited for everything to cool down i actually started doing brake hoses because that's one of the jobs as well we didn't know how old they were and this guy just wants to use the car and wants to be safe so we put on a new one there still got three more left to do but now everything is cooled down it's actually the next day and I've just pulled the carbs apart because these are Stromberg's and they have, there's one of the pistons, they have these diaphragms. And that's really the most important part, make sure that they are in good condition. Like I said, I had three of them at home, but I've checked them all, they're all in good condition. Carbs are a little bit dirty inside, looks like it's had a backfire or something at some point. So we can just clean out that and everything else should be fine. Going to be replacing all the fuel hoses as well down here and the main one up here and uh, the main one going up to it that one doesn't look that old but we'll replace all of those i found kind of a bad thing on the other side though which is uh we're missing a hose clamp so that fuel line does not have a hose clamp down there it's not leaking though so that's fantastic 
doesn't seem like there's hardly any pressure in the system because it has a return and all, but uh, that's a scary thing. And then we'll go back to the other side. I found another thing. So these carbs were pretty common here in Sweden, actually, because we had really strict emissions as well. So they were on a lot of Volvos and Saabs and those sort of things. So because they're very common, my guess is that someone has rebuilt these using incorrect parts because on a Stromberg carb you have basically three different types uh, either they have adjustable needles for the mixtures adjustable jets or they have none of it which is some really really strict California cars that I know some Volvos had but Jags are supposed to have adjustable needles so you have a special tool that I've shown you in different videos down here and you can twist the needle in and out however these um, they have a blanking plug in there so there's no adjustment on these and they're all the same I looked them through they're non adjustable which technically yeah it's not the greatest but we can make do so what I've done is I've looked at all of them and they're all set well they're all set to sort of the base adjustment so they're all evenly set so what we'll have to do is once the car uh, runs up a temperature and i'm able to test drive it and everything i'll have to check the mixture stand make sure that it's running all right if they need to be adjusted the only way to do it is to loosen the screw down there that grub screw that holds it in place and gently move the um, needles so yeah, not the greatest thing I found, but that's the thing you will find with cars that are you know, almost 50 years old and have had a lot of people working on them. You'll find some non-original parts, but I'm going to clean all of this up. I'm still waiting for the hose kit, but I think we can clean this up. We can fire it up. We can let it warm up, get up to operating temperature and just see how it runs now with at least ignition set well and all other things. But after that, we're also going to have to go through some of the electrics. You see, yeah, this is not the greatest. So we'll have to replace some of this and make some better connections just to make sure that we get it reliable. All right, a brief sort of stop here while I'm putting the last carb together. This is what I found. So you might be wondering, well, what's going on? Well, this is a completely wrong needle for this sort of car. I have no idea what this comes off. It doesn't match the other ones. The other ones may have the incorrect sort of pots up here, so not adjustable, but at least the needles were correct. But this one is, it's not spring-loaded and it's also completely loose. So I guess that is variable mixture right there. Luckily, a very, very good friend of the channel um, had a bunch of extra V12 parts I picked up a while ago, just random boxes of random things one of them being parts of one v12 carb and when you know it i went through all the parts i've been able to put this together with some parts i had laying around myself as well so this is what one is supposed to look like here is the little spring needle and everything so i put all this back together and this is one that's adjustable you can see the locking pins up there for the tool and um this is all built up from yeah, parts from different carbs, but sometimes it's good to have things laying around. So as you can hopefully see, I am moving the needle out and I can move it in as well. So I am going to set it, which is sort of the base setting where they call it a Delrin ring, I think, in the manual. But the ring here at the bottom of the needle should be completely, completely flush with this. You see, I can push that in. So... We're going to have to, it's not completely perfect. That's the wrong way. Right there is pretty good. So we'll use this, put it in there. I put a different diaphragm on it. So we'll put this in. So yeah, sometimes you find really, really weird things. And ideally, maybe we would need... A rebuild kit and some other things but it's gonna be hard to get a hold of these things but we'll start it up now all the needles are set the same way we'll let it warm up and then i mean we should try and balance everything 
and go from there. Like I said, this one we can adjust, the other ones we can adjust with that screw there and just you know move it in and out, that will work as well. But um, yeah, really, really glad I had this part laying around. Carbs are back together. I just hooked up the battery. So let's try a cold start. I also noticed that the back box wasn't really connected. It has slid out probably maybe from loading this thing on trail or something got caught. So I just put that back together. It's not going to be gas tight. But hopefully we should at least get exhaust fumes out the back on that side. And I can hear the carbs filling up. Let's give it some choke, it's quite cold, and let's see. I can hear an exhaust leak down here as well on this side. Maybe there's one on the other as well, so I will need to go through the exhaust on this thing. Yeah, we got a leak over there as well. So that will be a future video. Sounding very, very nice though. But I gotta wait for it to warm up, then I can go around and just check the air balance of them and um, sort of just check by lifting the piston, see what the mixture is like. But we gotta wait for this thing to warm up. So it's pretty much warmed up now. I'm gonna start up and show you guys what I found because currently it's running on three carbs. You see? You might think that's actually running pretty nicely, but it's not. Normally I like to use these because they're dead simple. However, I can't really get a good seal on them here. Well, there I can shows 14 and can't really get a seal on there it's actually showing zero and I grab the hose do the classic hose trick and I'm gonna get this on the mic and show you guys the hose trick hopefully I really hope you guys could hear the difference. There was a hissing in one and not a hissing in the other. These two uh, are drawing the same amount of air. They're hissing the exact same amount. So no issues with those, just that the whole idle spit too high. But on that side, we got an issue with one of the carbs. So I'm gonna try and figure that out. Why this carb over here, because it does run better on um, higher RPMs. It seems like it's drawing from there and at choke is drawing from there as well. So I'm gonna try and figure that out and report back when we get something working from that carb as well. So it's the next day. Everything's cooled down because I realized that this thing will need a complete carb tune just from the beginning, not just an adjustment. It's been running that poorly. And you know, idle speed was all over the place, way too high. And one carb wasn't even doing anything at idle. And these two were pretty decent. But yeah, just easier to start from scratch. And I released the previous part for early viewing on my Patreon. And I had a, a Patreon who commented that it would be great to see a video on tuning carbs on the V12s. I thought, you know what, let's incorporate that in this video. I will try to explain it the best way I can. It's one of those things that it's not the easiest unless you've done it. Uh, and I can't really explain it while I'm doing it because it would just be too noisy and you guys won't really be able to follow along, I think. So I'm going to explain to you guys with everything not running and then I'll do it and try and bring you guys along for that. And then, um, yeah, hopefully at the end of it, we'll have a good running engine and you guys will understand the basics of it. Step one is technically to get the thing up to operating temperature and make sure the choke is off. Then you disconnect the throttle linkage. On a injected car, you just pop them off with a screwdriver on carbureted. There's a nice little, see that little mechanism right there? Quite nifty. So I disconnected them up there. Then 
next step is to slacken that screw right there. That is a clamp bolt that clamps that carburetor to that carburetor for all the linkage. So I disconnect that. Then you have an idle screw on each side, one there and one there. Let me see if I can get this light a little bit brighter for you guys. There we go. Slacken them off all the way on all four carbs so that they don't make any contact with the throttle linkage. And of course, slacken that not on the other side. So everything I explained on this side, you do on the other side as well. When that is done, you have a little adjustment tongue down here. Let's see if I can show you guys that. It's very, very difficult to see all of this. There we go. See that there? So you have a adjustment screw and there is sort of a tongue in the middle between two pieces of metal. Adjust that so it's in the middle. That way you have the best adjustment. Do that on both sides. Now, make sure that this thing, of course, is not making any contact over there. Take this screw here, screw it in so it just makes contact and then one and a half turns in on the right hand rear carb, do the same thing on the left hand front carbs. And then on the front, the rear carb on that side, treat just like this one. So you're tuning across. Let me set this light up here again. So you're tuning across. So we're gonna focus on these two carbs there and we'll do those two last. Once that is done, fire it up and it should run and adjust your idle speed. Pretend basically that you just have two carbs, that one and that one. Adjust the idle speed between them. So you have between you know, 650, 750. I think 750 is pretty good, but somewhere around there and make sure they're drawing the same amount of hair, air. So either use a tool to check that or use a hose in your ear to check. So balance these two. Once that is done, you need to start balancing across. So once those two are done, don't touch that anymore. These are set. Now you need to use uh, these two to get them running correctly as well. So now you compare the carburetor you've set. So this one, for instance, compare the uh, hissing of the intake or measure it between that one and that one and use the adjustment screw there of the tongue that we talked about back and forth to balance them out. So make sure those are balanced. Do the same thing on the other side. It's just on that side, it's a front carb that you don't touch and you balance in the rear. Once you've done that and you're happy with that, check the idle speed again. If it has altered a little bit, let's say it's too high, you need to bring it down over here bring it down there, balance across there again, and then make sure the balance stays there. Once you're happy with it, it's running perfectly. Take the idle screw there, screw it in so it just makes contact. You don't want it to disturb that or move it, but just so it just makes contact with that on both sides, then you're set to go. You hook these back up, making sure that they're still uh, good slack in them. Let me see if I can do this one handed. See, there should be a little bit of slack in this when it's cold. Hook all that up, make sure it's good slack in that, make sure that they're even on both sides. And you should have a very smooth running V12. After that, there is, of course, adjustment to the choke and all of that. That is outlined really well in the manual, and that is pretty simple. Usually, not that big of a deal to set up but getting the balance right is the correct thing to start with. So really long explanation there, but I hope that is pretty clear. I am gonna start it up and do all of this now. It's gonna be way too noisy. I'll set up for you guys. And then in the end, we should have four balanced carbs. I've backed the adjustment screws off on both sides. I have set the so-called tongue here, the adjuster. Let's see if you guys can see it. It's down in there. I have set that to the middle so I have maximum adjustment and I have tightened the clamp on both sides. Now 
I'm going to turn that one in one and a half turns. So when I turn, let's see when I move this, that one moves as well. So we're all clamped together. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Hook this all up, fire it up, let it warm up, and then we can start adjusting things. So let's see. That just starts moving there. See? So half a turn, one turn, one and a half. I'll do the same thing to this side. Fire this thing up, warm it up, and then I'll be back when we start balancing it. I've let it warm up now and it's off choke. Idle is way too high. And I've started to listen around. All of them are drawing different amounts of air but we're gonna start, you know, diagonally. This one is drawing more than that one, so this will be my first one to turn down a bit and I have to disconnect these again. I just had them on there to get it started, but I can fire it up for you guys and just show how it runs. And you can hear the idle is way too high. It's about 1100 RPMs. So I'm going to listen around with my hose pipe here and start setting things up. And when these two are balanced, we'll be back and I'll show you what that sounds like. And then we're going to balance front and back. We are pretty close to balanced across. However, the idle is just way too high. And that's because this carb is just pulling too much air. So I'm going to skip ahead one step and adjust that one down a little bit because I can't get the initial setup correctly. I'll do that with that tongue thing here we talked about. See that's up. And I'll listen. Still higher on that one. still a little bit too high on this one so I'm gonna go through again maybe just check the basic adjustments on this one because something is going up with this carb causing it just to draw too much air after a lot of checking I found what the issue is there's something wrong with the throttle linkage on this carb I have these two completely backed off they're not connected together so they're completely at stop idle however see my finger down there if I move this one I can get it to move quite a bit so for some reason it is not going completely back to idle and all of this is loose I'm wondering if yeah that was it this one is just too far adjusted even though it felt loose now everything is fine so I'm gonna leave this disconnected for now we'll get that on there later and now I can go back and set everything else and try to adjust it a long while later and we're pretty bang on adjustment has gone pretty well I'm uh, happy with it I just have mixture left to do these two when I lift the pistons I'll show you guys in a second nothing really happens so they're pretty good those two it rises, so those two are a little bit rich, but they're well balanced and I'm pretty happy with the idle. So uh, let me just fire that for you. So let's see, that's an idle speed of about 700. Once you rev it once, it goes to 750. Uh, let me see here. Nothing really happens. Well, a little bit there. That one is a tiny bit lean. That one's good. And I believe both were pretty rich on the side. Yep. So lean those out a bit, richen that one up. You know what? I'm pretty happy with the results now. Of course, I want to go for a road test and all of that and do fine adjustments. 
So it's pretty good and I'm going to show you guys how it sounds and hopefully you guys can hear that it's running a lot better. It's a really sweet engine this one. Um, like I did on that side, I lowered the jets a little bit. I had to do it manually, remember? Or that one I could do it with tool. The other one I had to do it manually. This one I um, raised it a little bit. So now when I lift any of the pistons, nothing really happened. So that's a pretty good state of tune. But after a good drive, we'll pull some plugs. Have a look at that. I'm also going to hook up an exhaust analyzer after a good uh, drive to make sure it will pass emissions. But I can fire it up now. It wants to idle at about 800 because that's where it seems happiest at the moment. I may change that. may bring the idle down a little bit once I've driven it a bit. But um, it seems really, really happy right now. Listen to that purr. Sounds absolutely, absolutely fantastic. We are sitting at a, it's about 800 RPM idle. It's been keeping good temperature the whole time. Uh, we've used a, about, uh, about an eighth to a quarter of a tank of fuel. It takes quite a bit of fuel to do this. Not a hint of a misfire. Just running extremely, extremely nicely. Got some exhaust leaks to fix and other things, but I think the owner is gonna be really, really happy with it. I don't think this V12 has run this good in years. This And mission completed. We have a V12 running on 12, running very well. Things left to do, of course, put air cleaners back on that, but I'm not gonna do that now because I wanna replace the fuel hoses. I'll be doing that when I do the coolant hoses and all of that. Still waiting on those to arrive. This should arrive at the beginning of next week so I can get on and start doing that. In the meantime, I'm gonna replace brake hoses and do all those things. But I think the next video you'll see on this car will be out test driving it doing a final tune and then seeing if it will go through and pass inspection, which I hope it will. I've also noticed an oil leak in the back by the oil pressure sender, which doesn't work. So I'm going to see if I have a spare one, otherwise order one up, fix that oil leak. But otherwise, I think we have a very sweet running V12. One thing I still need to do is set the chokes. That's pretty simple. There's a little screw down there and adjustment. Just make sure that they, you know, open the chokes evenly on both sides and turn them off on both sides. So pretty straightforward. But I hope you guys were able to follow. It's not the easiest thing to explain how to tune V12 with carbs, but it's doable. It takes quite a bit of time. And if you feel like you mess it up, just go back to scratch. Just go back to the beginning, reset everything again and go from there. And make sure you have all the linkages disconnected. I have now connected the linkages up and just made sure that there's a little bit of play in all of them so nothing binds up and that they're all running well. Anyway, so if you like this video, please give a thumbs up, share with your friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. Until next time, I'm Adam. This was Lumifit Classic. I'll see you soon.